Oh, lovely suists. After much designing, cutting, and sewing, my perfect row pattern is finally complete. I wanted to create a longer version after the previous short robe. One that is lacy, elegant, sexy, but not too much. Perhaps a good choice even for a bride. Follow along step by step, and let's sew together this magical robe that will inspire both special occasions and everyday moments. If you're curious for a shorter version, you can find it at the link above. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stay updated on new videos. Let's get started. I'll link the pattern in the description for you. It's readily downloadable, and you'll get all the important instructions with it for making it. You can even print it at home with a regular printer. In my earlier video, I demonstrate how to easily print and assemble the digital patterns. Once you've done that, we can start cutting. Place the patterns on the fabric. The easiest way for me to cut is to trace around the patterns first marking all the important symbols on them. Then I remove the papers and start cutting. I love these disappearing ink pens. They're highly visible, easy to write with, and can be made to disappear with one move. I chose this lace and a shiny, very soft satin for it. When selecting lace, it's important to consider its width. This one is 25 centimeter wide, and the pattern is designed for this width. If you choose narrower or wider lace, keep in mind that the sleeve length will change. You can easily compensate for this by adding the missing centimeters to the sleeve piece or subtracting from it depending on the difference. The first step is to sew the shoulders together, right sides facing each other. Overlock the shoulder seam allowances or sew them with a zigzag stitch. Press the seam allowances towards the back. together one long edge of the sleeve and the lace, right sides facing each other. When sewing, I suggest placing the lace underneath so it won't get caught in the sewing machine foot. Sew with a one centimeter seam allowance and don't forget to backstitch at the start and end. Overlock or sew a zigzag stitch along the seam allowance of both sleeves. This is a simple technique to prevent the unraveling of the overlock stitch later on. You don't need anything else, just a large needle. Slightly loosen the dangling threads and thread them all onto the needle. Reverse the needle and carefully insert it back into the overlock stitch. Just a few centimeters. Pull out the needle and trim off the excess thread. That's it! This way the stitch will not unravel. Overlock or sew a zigzag stitch along the sides of the sleeves as well. Pay attention to folding the seam allowance towards the satin fabric when sewing. Since lace isn't a woven fabric, it won't unravel. It's sufficient to start overlocking from the satin fabric when finishing the edges. Thank you. 
use the previous technique to finish off all the overlocked seam ends. Press the seams flat. Then press them towards the satin fabric. Pin the center of the sleeves to the shoulder seams and align the edges of the sleeves with the marks on the front and back pieces. Sew with the right sides together. Overlock these two sections from the bottom of the front to the bottom of the back. Press the seam flat. Turn the robe inside out, as shown in the illustration, and sew the bottom of the sleeve and the side of the robe. At the corner, leave the needle down and turn sharply. Cut the corner under the armpit, right up to the seam, being careful not to cut into the seam itself. Let's continue with the collar. We cut it with folded layers, so we have two pairs of front collars and one short back collar. Place the front collars right sides together as we cut them, and sew along the outer longer curve with a 1 cm seam allowance. Similarly turn the two back collars right sides together and sew along the shorter curved edge with a 1 cm seam allowance. Cut into the seam allowances on the curved parts to avoid wrinkling when you turn the collar back. Be careful not to cut into the seam itself. Cut into the seam allowances on the front collar as well, only at the curved parts. Turn the collars right side out and iron them so that the seams are at the edges. Place the collars in this order, open them up, then sew with the right sides together using a 1 cm seam allowance.
always check that the seams align perfectly. Use a color in place. Turn it so that the right side faces the right side of the robe. Overlock or sew the seam with a zigzag stitch. Press the seam flat. Pin, then sew the lace onto the bottom of the robe. Sew the seam with a serger. Press the seam allowance towards the satin fabric here as well. On the edge of the waistband, fold it back towards the wrong side by one centimeter. Then fold it in half horizontally, ensuring that the right side is on the inside. Pin it the fold, then sew along the edge with the one centimeter seam allowance. Stop sewing one centimeter before reaching the end. Pivot at the corner and sew the short side, also with a one centimeter seam allowance. Ensure that when you pivot the fabric, the needle is down to prevent the fabric from slipping. Turn the waistband inside out. Using a pin, carefully turn the corners out.
the other edge, adjust the fold to ensure that the edge is precisely straight. Sew one millimeter wide. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful or enjoyable, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications for upcoming tutorials. I'm excited to see your creations. Feel free to share your finished robes using the Rika Swing Patterns hashtag so I can admire your work as well. Until next time, happy sewing!